Starfish are echinoderms. Here is an image from a microscope under low magnification. You can see eggs and embryos at various stages of development. Starfish have isolecithal eggs, which contain a very small amount of yolk evenly distributed in the egg cells. In an unfertilized egg, the nucleus is visible and located almost in the middle of the cell. The nucleolus is also visible. The cell has been dyed red. The egg cell has a plasma membrane. There is a transparent outermost layer called the vitelline membrane. Here we see a fertilized egg and another that has reached the cleavage stage. Due to changes in the cytoplasm, the nucleus is not visible at the cleavage stage. Cell division occurs and the number of cells increases. In this picture, we see a two-cell embryo. For starfish, the entire embryo undergoes cell division. This is called holoblastic cleavage. Cell division continues and the number of cells increases. Here we see a four-cell embryo. Notice the approximately equal size of the cells in this embryo. Here is an eight-cell embryo. Notice that as the number of cells increases, the size of the cells gets smaller. The outermost clear layer covering the embryo is called the fertilization membrane. The fertilization membrane develops from the vitelline membrane. There is a space between the cell membrane and the fertilization membrane. This space is called the perivitelline space. As cell division progresses, the number of cells increases and the embryo develops into a morula. The next stage is called a blastula. The blastula has a fluid-filled space in the center surrounded by cells organized into a single layer. The space in the center of the cells is called the blastocele. During the cleavage stage, the space between the cells is filled with fluid. As the number of cells increases, the cells are pushed away toward the outside. Here we see a late blastula embryo. The cell layer that surrounds the blastocele is not of uniform thickness. The thicker side is the vegetal pole. The thinner opposite side is the animal pole. The next stage is called a gastrula. Gastrulation is characterized by cell movement and the formation of a new cavity called the gastrocil. The cells at the vegetal pole flatten and move inward. The cells get pushed inward towards the blastocele in a process called invagination. This cell movement creates the gastrocele inside the blastocele. The gastrocele is also called the archenteron or the primitive gut. The opening of the cavity is called the blastopore. The layer of cells that surround the gastrocele is called the endoderm. The cells that remain on the surface of the embryo become the ectoderm. As the embryo continues to grow, the gastrocele elongates and the tip of the gastrocele begins to expand. In this late gastrula stage, there are large star-shaped cells 
inside the blast cell called mesenchyme cells. The mesenchyme cells cling together into a reticular structure that becomes the mesoderm. As the embryo continues to grow further, the tip of the gastrocele bulges into two pouch-like archenteric vesicles. Eventually, the archenteric vesicles separate and develop into coelums. The gastrocele, also known as the archenteron, develops into the digestive tract. The tip of the gastrocele extends and meets with the ectoderm to form the mouth. The blastopore becomes the anus. This shows a starfish embryo at an advanced stage of development. The embryo has three layers of tissues. The digestive tract is fully developed. We call this stage a bipinaria larva. In this video, we will learn about the early development of a frog. This is an image of a frog's ovary under low magnification. Inside the ovary, there are many egg cells, including immature oocytes and fully developed ones. This is an immature egg that has been dyed red. There is not much yolk accumulation. The cytoplasm is still visible. The dye has made it light red. You can see a nucleus in the middle of the cell and many visible nucleoline that appear darker red. As the egg grows more, more yolk is accumulated within the cell. The yolk is located on the vegetal pole and pushes the nucleus towards the animal pole. This type of egg is called a mesolacetal egg. Mesolacetal eggs contain intermediate-sized yolks that are strongly concentrated in one hemisphere. In this mature egg, the cytoplasm is coarser, different from the cytoplasm of eggs that are not fully mature. In addition, it has a dark-colored hemisphere called the animal pole. The picture shows that the animal pole is darker than the vegetal pole. After the frog egg is fertilized, we call it a zygote. The zygote begins to divide in order to increase the number of cells and becomes an embryo. This picture shows the first cell division, which occurs vertically from the animal pole down to the vegetal pole. The cell division at the vegetal pole is slower than at the animal pole because the vegetal pole contains a lot of yolk granules. The faster cell division in the animal pole results in more cells of smaller size. These are called micromeres. The cells at the vegetal pole are larger and are called macromeres. These types of cell division with different cell size is called holoblastic unequal cleavage. At this stage of embryo, we can see an empty space among the cells. The space enlarges and becomes a blastocele, which indicates the beginning of the next stage of cell division. This picture shows the next stage called a blastula. The frog's blastula has a round shape with the blastocele inside near the vegetal pole. 
The blastocele is surrounded by multiple layers of cells. These multiple layer of cells around the blastocele is different from what is found in the blastula of an isolecithal egg. For isolecithal eggs, the blastocele is surrounded by only one layer of cells. The next stage is a gastrula. Gastrulation begins with a cell movement in which a cap of cells forming an epithelial layer on the top of the animal pole extends to the vegetal pole. Just below the equator in the region of the gray crescent, a cell movement called invagination occurs and the dorsal lip of blastopore is created. As the cells continue moving, groups of cells roll inward to form an underlying layer. The first group of cells rolling inward is called the corda mesoderm, and the movement is called involution. This picture shows a laid gastrula embryo also called the yolk plug stage. At this point, you can see future mesoderm cells resulting from involution. This is the ventral lip of blastopore. Larger cells at the vegetal pole divide slowly and get pushed inward. In the end, most of these cells will be the endoderm. However, some cells remain attached to the blastopore. This is called the yolk plug. At this stage, the embryo has gastrocele, which will develop to be a privative gut. In addition, the size of blastocele gets smaller, and eventually, the blastocele disappears. At the end of the gastrula stage, the embryo has three primary germ layers. The ectoderm is the outermost layer, the mesoderm is the middle layer, and the endoderm is the innermost layer surrounding the primitive gut. A pin in the middle shows the notochord, which is developed from the corda mesoderm. The notochord plays an important role in the development of nervous system. The notochord induces thickening of the neural ectoderm, forming the neural plate. The neural plate rises and forms neural folds with a neural groove in the middle. After that, neural folds continue to extend and curve into a tube-like structure. When the neural folds touch, they merge, creating the neural tube surrounding the neural seal, which once was the neural groove. Chicken eggs are classified as telolecithal eggs, meaning they contain a large amount of yolk. This large amount of yolk will push the germinal dish containing the nucleus to be near the animal pole. This white dot is the germinal disc that contains the nucleus and most of the cytoplasm. During the cleavage stage, cell division occurs only at the animal pole around the germinal disc. There is no cell division in the yolk. Later in the cleavage stage, cell division results in a collection of flat, thin cells above the yolk called the blaster disc or blastoderm. As the cells divide further, the embryo enters the blastula stage. A cavity begins to form beneath the blastoderm and the yolk, 
by the detachment of the self from the underlying yolk. The cavity is called the subgerminal cavity. In the gastrula stage, the cells of the blastoderm continue dividing. The lower layer of the blastoderm migrates into the subgerminal cavity to form the hypoblast. This movement of the cells is called delamination. The upper layer of the blastoderm still remaining at the surface is called the epiblast. This epiblast is where the primitive streak is formed. The development of the embryo from fertilization to blastulation occurs in the hen's fallopian tube. By the time a hen has laid the egg, the blastulation is nearly finished. The blastoderm contains some 20,000 cells. To study of the embryo development, the eggs are collected and placed in an incubator so that they continue developing. The eggs are removed from the incubator and examined periodically, for example, when they are 18 hours old or 24 hours old, etc. For studying the embryo under a microscope, the blastoderm is isolated from the yolk and mounted onto a glass slide. We call the slide with the entire chicken embryo a whole mount slide. You will see two different areas of the blastoderm. The central area of the blastoderm above the subgerminal cavity is translucent and it is called the area pellucida. The outer opaque area surrounding the area pellucida is called the area opaca. The 18-hour-old embryo has a primitive streak in the middle of the area pellucida. This streak is first visible as a thickening of the epiblast at the posterior region of the embryo. The thickening is caused by rapid cell division in the middle of the epiblast and by migration of cells. At the anterior end of the primitive streak is an area of thickening and bulging of cells called the primitive knot. The two ridges of the primitive streak are called the primitive ridges which run along a shallow trench called the primitive groove. The center of the primitive knot is called the primitive pit and is surrounded with the cells of the primitive knot. This model shows the primitive streak with red color. The cells that accumulate at the primitive streak continue to move inwards between the epiblast and hypoblast. This movement is called involution. The movement results in three layers. The lowest layer is the hypoblast, which develops into the endoderm. The top layer is the epiblast, which develops into the ectoderm and the middle layer becomes the mesoderm. 